All right, we're pretty much finishing up with this 24 volt um, MPP solar all-in-one inverter, this 2400 watt output pure sine wave, and I think it's 3000 watt input, and it'll go up to 80 amp charging on this inverter. We have two of the watt cycle, a 12.8 volt, 280 amp hour smart mini batteries in series right there. And for 24 volt bank, and we're sitting at uh, 26, 20, 23 to 28 point, 27.3 to 27.8 volts on our voltage for our batteries. So they're pretty much topped off there. Um, so we have one battery at 93%. It stopped charging. It's a 13.4 volts, zero amp, zero watts. And is it? No, it's our other battery. So the other battery is at 100%. Okay, it's at 100%. It's at 13.4 volts, zero watts, and uh, zero amps. So it, if I set that on, it just, it's at 100%, so it won't charge anymore. So we're stuck where one's battery's at 100% and the other one's at 93. That's not going to work for us because it's been a week and it's already degraded 7% on the difference of the two batteries. So the BMS is inside is not allowing it to charge equally with each other. So we're going to keep running into problems where probably the more longer we go, the wider the gap is on the charging on these, unless we can get the um, settings, use the settings in here or the settings in the battery to maybe equalize that out. I'll have to see if I can get a hold of Watt Cycle and ask them. So... That this morning, when I came out at like 7.30, it was 45% state of charge in one and 35% state of charge in the other. That was a 10% different state of charge. That means for, at the one at 35, if it were to go down to 20, the other one would be at 30% and it would knock out, the BMS would cut off the voltage for the batteries and shut down the inverter and powering the uh, EG4 12,000 BTU direct solar mini split. So that would shut that down. So that's not gonna really work for us. We'll try and play with it and see if we can get them to charge equally. But you definitely would be able to use this setup. I would go with a 24 volt and these are 3584 watts, so they're almost 7.2 kilowatts of battery storage. So I'd go with at least a 7 kilowatt um, battery. You might be able to go down as low as 6, but you're really pushing it to where it's going to cut off on the 20%. So 7 kilowatt would seem to be okay to be able for me to run it in my garage overnight to keep my garage at 76 to 78 degrees. It was 100 and 16 degrees 114 or 116 degrees yesterday so it was hot <laughs> and it was 92 overnight was the low so we kept our garage at 72 to 70 i'm sorry 76 to 78 degrees which is really comfortable and with two of these running overnight that's generating heat along with that generating heat and the fan going now that one uses about 70 75 watts of idle consumption when it's being used overnight these use around 50 um if i were to actually do this i would set this up with a uh, 24 volt battery and not put them in series that's not doesn't seem to be working well and it would definitely you could definitely do this where you could cycle that on and off so during the night you put it on dry mode I put mine at around 84, 85 degrees. And that actually keeps my garage at 76 to 78 degrees, which is very comfortable with the inverters running and everything. And the freezers, I have three freezers and a refrigerator that, you know, producing heat in the garage. It's 76, 78 degrees. That's perfect. 
off of this little system. It's around 600 square feet in this garage. So that works really well. And then during the day, I can actually put the mini split on um, turbo at 61 degrees. And I believe in the garage right now, we are at uh, 66 degrees right there, right below the 61. So we have it set at 61. We're drawing 700 watts from the solar panel direct input and 120 watts from our solar off of this inverter right here. So it's doing a good job on keeping the garage nice and cool. So yes, you can run it on those 12 volt batteries, two of them in series. But unless you get everything settled with that, where it's charging those batteries equally, and right now we're off by 7% after a week, that's not going to work that well because probably the longer you go, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, it's going to, the separation of the state of charge is going to get probably to where it'll be like 70% on one battery and 100% on the other. So that's not going to be a viable option for us because we don't want to have to sit there and take the one battery that's at 70 or 80 percent and disconnect it from being in series and from the inverter or yeah the inverter and uh put it on a like a charger there and charge it back up you know every week every two weeks every three weeks whatever but if we if we get down to a 90 100 then we're risking that you know the one's going to reach 20 percent state of charge and the bms is going to cut it off and shut down the inverter. So we don't want to get to that point. So if you're going to do this, I would do it with a 24 volt battery and I think you'll be fine. For me, I'd be fine with seven kilowatts. You know, you might want to look at getting something a little bit higher. My garage is very well insulated. This wall and this wall and most of this wall is inside the house. That one is outside wall, but it's got all the cabinets on it, so it really doesn't come into play with the heat. So you can do that. I would just do a 24-volt battery. It wouldn't string two 12 volts together. That's all. So that's pretty much it on that. Um, if somebody's watching and they want me to sample one of their, test one of their 24-volt batteries that's at least like 6, 7 kilowatt, um, you can contact me at DIYSolarGuy1 at gmail.com and set up collaborating with me. Or if you have like a charge controller, an inverter, or other type of batteries or anything, uh, even for my RV, if you have like um, rooftop ACs you'd like me to charge, because we're going to be doing solar, off-grid solar in the RV. Right now we have a, a 9 kilowatt Zocop mini split um the condensers on the outside bumper mounted on the outside bumper with a, a cage around it and the mini split head is on the inside of the camper so um i'm looking at i'm doing that but i'm also going to be looking at doing a uh addition where they have rooftop rv or trailer air conditioners are like 12 or 120 volt uh, where you can take out one of your vents and put an air conditioner in there. So if you have something like that, you would like me to test for you. I would love to collaborate with you. Just contact me through DIY solar guy one at gmail.com. It's pretty much it. If you have any comments or questions, or if you're trying to set something up like this, just a real quick thing. These are around 700 bucks delivered. These are around four to $500 each. Um, I'm, I've got to look and see. I think they might have a 24 volt on that. That's, I'll have to look and see on those. Um, those are around 700 bucks. The difference between one of those, that one is only 120 volt. You can connect 12 of them together in parallel, but you're only going to get 120 volt, or you can get... Um, three phase out of it, but you can't get split phase, 120, 240. So you get three phase connecting three of those 
in groups of three up to 12 inverters. Now with this, you can get um, 120 volt or you can get split phase on these. Um, not sure if you can get uh, three phase on them. You might, not sure. I, I don't use that, so <laughs> it's kind of something I wouldn't remember. But on these, they're around 700 bucks. Those batteries are like four to 500 bucks each, free shipping. And I'll have links in the description for these. But these batteries are around $12.99, um, but they have to come freight. Those can come UPS or FedEx, um, but these have to go ground freight. So they're a little more expensive. Uh, and the mini splits, I'm being able to run this system on that EG4 12,000 BTU mini split, but that's direct solar connect where I've got, you can connect up to 1700 watts of solar on that um, and run that during the day just off of solar. As soon as you get enough solar, it'll turn on and then it'll shut down at the end of the day if you don't have battery or you don't have it connected to the grid or something. So, but that's a 22 sear and we can put this on dry mode Kicking out like in the high 50, low 60s, set at like 84 to 86 degrees overnight. And I'll keep my garage, which is 600 square feet, at 76 to 78 degrees. So those are some of the prices you would expect to pay for that. And then you got to pay for solar panels, um, wiring, cables. So if you have any comments, questions, don't hesitate to ask. I get back really quick within um, a couple of minutes to 24 hours. And please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And we'll see you in the next video.